Hey guys, welcome back to Quilling Chronicles Pink and Floyd. Today we are here with the skip on Team Peterson, Tabitha Peterson. Yeah, hi, happy to be here. So I am from St. Paul, Minneapolis area, Minnesota. I grew up there. Um, started curling when I was about 10 and joined the junior program, you know, made some friends, got on a team, started fun feeling in the junior circuit and um, started when I was a junior, I was mostly playing third. Um, but then in women's, I started at lead. And so I've kind of played every position and now I'm at skip, but I've never played second. Yeah. Do you have a preference on the position you look the most? I think third and skip are the most fun to me, the most dynamic, and you get to call line, and I like that. So. Tell us about your curling journey. So after juniors, um, I started curling with Allison Potcher, and we made a crack at going to the 2014 Olympics. Uh, we lost a, in the finals of the Olympic trials that year, so close, but not close enough. Um, so that was 2014. And then 28, so the next quad would have been up, leading up to Pyeongchang in 2018. Um, got on a new team because those ladies kind of retired. So we joined a new team in the high performance program. Um, shuffled a few players around here and there, but we kind of settled on me, me, Nina, Becca, and Eileen. So the four of us went to the Olympics in 2018 in South Korea. Um, and then fast forward another quad so in 2022 we had the same four and then we brought my sister Tara onto the team as well. So when and how did you know that you worked well as a team together? So we kind of just try to keep things light and fun so if you're not having fun then you know why are you out there so we were really good friends on and off nights. So what do you think it takes for you and the team? you and your team to get to, uh, 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 to get to like what you want to say? Um, lots of hard work, um, time management is huge. We have to sh like juggle a lot in terms of like school or your work, your job. Um, so just kind of managing your time appropriately to get the time off because you're traveling a lot, curling and all these various tournaments. Um, but yeah, lots of hard work. We practice a lot when we're home and we um, work hard at the gym too. So how do you balance your full-time job with me? So I'm not full-time, I would say I'm like part-time. So some people do work full-time, but they can maybe work remote. I can't work remotely. So I work part-time and that is kind of the perfect balance for me. So I can work two to three days a week and then curl kind of the other days. Um, I mean, you kind of have to think one step ahead, being the skip, you know, calling the strategy and calling the shots. The biggest thing is to kind of stay one step ahead and um, calling line is huge to the make So do you warm up individually or as a team? Um, both. So tell us about workouts, training, and routine. So we luckily have a really nice training facility in Egan, where we live, um, and I don't know if you've met Mike, but he's our trainer. So he runs us through workouts. It's kind of like full body. Um, every day is kind of broken down into different, so like an arm day, a leg day, a shoulder day, you know, um, but we do a lot of different things, and um, he kicks our butt in the gym. It's good. Yep. So what is your mindset if your team is down points in a game? How do you stay focused and motivated? good question um, yeah you kind of just you have to just flush whatever happened in a previous end and kind of just stay in the moment and look forward you can't change what happened in the past so you're just trying to make your next shot even better or sweep your teammate shot even better um, just kind of looking forward so how do you prepare for the big shots um, I think it just comes with time and experience um, you kind of just have to trust your process of like I know what the kick speed is sliding out of the hack and just trust that your body's going to know what to do. So how, how do you talk after wins your We kind of have a team debrief no matter what. Um, 
we try to figure out what we did wrong, what we did right, because it's out, there's always learning opportunities, right? So we're trying to pinpoint just those little things that kind of give us a better edge for the next game. So we talk win or lose. So what's the toughest opponent you play in one? Um, I'm going to probably say Switzerland. Silvana Tiranzoni's team is super tough. They're a strong team. They they just don't miss a lot, so you don't get a lot of opportunities and chances. Um, and they really like pounce on your misses. So yeah, they're they're a very tough team. We've had some very close games with them. We have beat them like a couple times, but every time we go up against them, we know it's going to be a tough one. How was a moment in your career that you're most proud of? Um, I think winning my first Olympic trials is probably the most exciting and just was kind of a dream come true. So what are some tips to make it from the making it, uh, making it to the national to the very top? Um, kind of just goes back to the hard work. Um, you got to put the time in. We also like watch a lot of curling. Um, you can learn a lot from watching the best. So, and we also watch a lot of our own games. Like our coach films all our games. And sometimes we'll like wear microphones so we can hear, we can go back and hear ourselves too. Um, because it's nice to know kind of how you were communicating shots during a, you know, an intense point in the game or just, you know, just trying to figure out that extra edge so. Um, just go out there and have fun and try to just learn as much as you can. Get, get some friends, get in that team, and if you just play, yeah. you're going to learn a lot. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome, you guys. Thank you.